You've seen the driller jotting down bits of information and working a ton mile slide rule. If you're a driller, you've calculated ton miles yourself. You know it's not easy. The ton mile tables and slide rules can't give you exact ton miles worked by your drilling line, but based on the operations you've performed, they can give you the best available estimate. It's important for you to keep accurate records and use the slide rule properly. If you've had experience calculating ton miles, this will be a good review. To maintain accurate records of drilling line service, you must include ton miles tripping, ton miles drilling, ton miles coring, ton miles fishing, and ton miles setting casing. Also, short or wiper trips for hole conditioning should be calculated in ton miles and entered on your service record. For offshore operations, you should also consider ton miles in setting and pulling BOP stacks and risers. To help us figure ton miles for running BOP stacks and risers, we asked U.S. Steel to come up with a formula. In a typical SEDCO situation, using a BOP stack weighing 405,000 pounds, a traveling block assembly of 80,000 pounds, including a heave compensator, and riser weighing 10,700 pounds per 50-foot joints, they supplied us with two workable formulas. To figure ton miles running a stack and riser with flotation collars, use the formula ton miles equal 5.5 ton miles per 100 feet of water times the depth of the water. To figure ton miles without flotation collars, use the formula ton miles equals 6.3 ton miles per 100 feet of water times the depth of the water. With a given depth of 2,000 feet, your figure is approximately 110 ton miles with flotation collars and 126 ton miles without flotation collars. This figure is for either running or pulling a stack and riser, that is to say, one half of one round trip. To calculate ton miles for most of these operations, you need an IADC drilling manual or a ton mile slide rule. The slide rule is the simplest to use, so let's take a look at it. Most of your ton miles are incurred on round trips. During a trip, work is done by raising and lowering the traveling block assembly, and by running and pulling the drill pipe, drill collars, and the bit. Most likely you're drilling with mud, so the effective weight of the drill stem will be less than its actual weight due to its buoyancy in the mud. It gets involved and complicated, as you can see from this formula for round trip ton miles. You can find this formula and how it's derived in the API bulletin RP-9B. Fortunately, it's not necessary to understand this formula if you use the greatly simplified slide rule or the tables found in the drilling manual. This slide rule has instructions that'll help you, but it's still important for you to understand the process if you want to use it accurately and quickly. Select the proper slide for the size and weight of your drill pipe. Insert it into the slide rule and determine the excess weight allowance. Even if you're new to this ton mile business, you probably know that excess weight allowance isn't a weekly payment you get for being overweight. M plus one half C. That's what excess weight allowance is. M is the weight of your traveling block assembly. One half C is one half the excess buoyed weight of the drill collar string. This value is required because drill collars weigh more than drill pipe. So for a given length of drill collar string, you've got to add the extra weight over and above what the same length of drill pipe would weigh. Of course, the M is necessary because the drilling line is raising and lowering the weight of the block assembly too. Keep the weight of the traveling block assembly written down in a convenient place. In SEDCO's drilling line service record, there's plenty of space inside the front cover to record the weight of all traveling equipment. The IADC drilling manual gives these weights based on the capacities of the block, hooks, links, and elevators. 
For offshore operations, you should include the weight of heave compensators. To determine one half C, the excess buoyed weight of the drill collars, set the slide for the number of collars you ran. Then, under your drill collar size, find one half the excess buoyed weight. Add this figure to the weight of the block assembly to get the excess weight allowance. So to use our formula, take M, or 24,450 pounds, and add one half C, or 25,500 pounds, to get your excess weight allowance of 49,950 pounds. Now set the slide rule to the depth of the trip. In the section labeled ton mile tables, look above the figure closest to your excess weight allowance. This gives you the number of ton miles worked in a round trip. Let's figure ton miles drilling. Take the differences between round trip ton miles before and round trip ton miles after drilling. Multiply by three. For ton miles coring, take the difference in round trip ton miles before and after coring and multiply by two. To figure ton miles setting casing on land operations, Use the chart supplied in the back of your ton mile tables supplied by your wire rope manufacturer. Select the appropriate chart for the diameter of your drilling line and your excess weight allowance. Find the average weight per foot of the casing. Extend a line from that point on the weight scale through the setting depth. At the point where the line intersects the ton mile scale, Read the ton miles work setting that casing. In the absence of this chart, you can determine an approximate value for ton miles setting casing by taking one half the ton miles for a round trip of comparable weight drill pipe at the same depth. This doesn't always work because many charts and slide rules don't have figures for weights over 19 or 20 pounds per foot. One exception is the ton mile chart in the API bulletin RP-9B which includes weights up to 40 pounds per foot. We've covered a lot. Many calculations for you to do and figures to keep up with. Well, hell, I can't sit around here doing all that. I've got to get out there and give the boys a hand on that well. You're right. That's why we've developed this simple drilling line service record to make your job as easy as possible. It helps you keep up with the figures you need in order to maintain a good cutoff program for your line. Now let's put what we've learned to work using the drilling line service record in a hypothetical drilling situation. You're a new tool pusher on rig triple X. Your drilling superintendent asks you for your recommendations for a slipping and cutoff program. To avoid excessive downtime, you decide to skip the slipping. You'll make a slip and cut whenever cutoff is called for. To determine a good cutoff length, you look at the drilling line service record in your office. In your IADC manual, you find the information you need, your derrick height and drawworks drum diameter. You whip out the slide rule and look at the chart on the back. There's your 136 foot derrick. Follow the line over to your drum diameter. There it is, 32 inches. The chart says nine and a half drum laps per cutoff. One lap equals pi, 3.14, times the diameter, 32 inches. 100 inches times 9.5 equals 950 inches, or almost 80 feet. So you'll recommend an 80-foot cutoff. If there's a doubt about your drum size, measure the diameter from the bottom of the grooves. How many ton miles should you try for between cutoffs? This chart on the slide rule tells you API's recommendation for ton miles before the first cutoff on a new line. Let's see. The formations you're drilling in are firm to hard, unconsolidated, with no deviation problems. That's like drilling in West Texas. So you get your answer where West Texas intersects the line diameter. In your case, it's 1 and 3 eighths inches. So the chart gives you 1,800 ton miles before the first cutoff. It says here, for subsequent cutoffs, subtract 200 ton miles. So your standard cutoff program is to cut 80 feet after each 1,600 ton miles. That sounds like a reasonable starting point there. We can uh, use that uh, 
start with, and then we can watch our line. Close. Yeah, we can we can see if we can't get a few more tongue miles on between cuts. We just have to go close to the Why don't we run the same tongue miles and, and cut less line? Well, Ron, the, the, the cutoff, the length of cutoff there is real critical. It's, it's all based on the distance between our pickup point and the, the diameter of the drum, you know. Now that you have your cutoff program, make sure it's written down on the service record for future reference. You'll need all this information later. Okay, Jake, your crew has just completed a round trip to change the bit. This means it's time to update the drilling line service record. Time to figure ton miles. You're using four and a half inch 1660 drill pipe, so make sure that slide is in the slide rule. For 23 drill collars, six and a quarter by two and a quarter, one half the excess buoyed weight is 21.7 thousand pounds. Add to this the weight of the block assembly, 24,000 pounds, to get an excess weight allowance of 45,700 pounds. Set the depth at 14,000. The closest to your excess weight allowance is 45,000. Read above this, 501 ton miles. If you're ever caught without a slide rule when it's time to figure ton miles, another method is available to you. Use the ton mile tables in your IADC manual or your ton mile book. To figure the excess weight allowance, open the tables to your drill pipe size, one and a half inch 1660. Find the number of collars you ran, 23, and the size, six and a quarter by two and a quarter. Follow the lines that they meet, giving you an excess buoyed weight of 21.7 thousand pounds. Add this to the weight of the block assembly, 24,000, to get an excess weight allowance of 45,700 pounds. Now you're ready to figure ton miles. Flip through the tables until you find the value closest to your excess weight allowance, 45,000 pounds. Under the depth column, find 14,000. Since you're at an even 14,000, read under column zero, or 501 ton miles. These tables have broken the depth down into 100 foot columns. If you're at a depth of say, 14,800 feet, read under the 800 column to get 546 ton miles. The remarks ton miles column should include drilling, coring, setting casing, any measurable work other than tripping. You've been drilling, so use the drilling ton mile formula. Subtract ton miles last trip from ton miles this trip. And multiply by three. Total your ton miles for the trip. And add these to the ton miles since the last slip. You can easily see that you have 480 ton miles before your next cutoff. That's about half your current trip's ton miles, so you'll plan to cut the line when you're out of the hole next trip. Make a note in the remarks column of how much you cut and the condition of the line when you cut. And remember, after making a cut, to reset the chronomatic. All the calculations and records you're keeping will go to waste if you take a chance on destroying your rig's equipment by running into the crown. Before this trip, you cut a core, so to figure other ton miles, use the coring ton miles formula. Subtract the last trip's ton miles from this trip's and multiply by two. The next trip, you set eight and five eighths inch casing to a depth of 16,000 feet. Turn to the back of your ton miles tables and find the casing chart for one and three eighths inch drilling line. The casing averaged 42 pounds per foot. 
500 ton miles. When you get to the end of a page, add up the total number of feet cut off from the entries on that page. Subtract the number of feet cut off from the number of feet left on the reel at the beginning of the page to get the amount of line left on the reel. If you keep up with this, you'll have plenty of warning before you run out of drilling line. We've covered a lot of ground in this program and you're probably anxious to try the sample problems in the workbook. So let's review the major points and some of the formulas and tables quickly. It's common sense. Slipping and cutting is a means of gradually replacing drilling line. But more importantly, it's a way of getting maximum safe life from a line by moving the critical points of wear to less critical areas. You can figure a good starting point for cutoff length by using this table on your slide rule. You have to know your derrick height and drum diameter. This chart, on the same slide rule, will give you API's recommendation for ton miles between cutoffs. You need to know your line diameter and drilling conditions. Keep in mind that this is only a guide. Always rely on visual inspection and adjust your program accordingly. You can use this simple slide rule to determine ton miles worked on various jobs. You've got to know your drill pipe size and weight, drill collars size and number, the weight of the traveling block assembly, and the depth of the trip. For ton miles drilling, take the difference between round trip ton miles before and round trip ton miles after drilling, multiply by three. For ton miles coring, multiply by two. And for ton miles setting casing, use the charts in your IADC manual or your ton mile tables. You can also figure casing ton miles based on one half the round trip ton miles for drill pipe of comparable weight.